Good evening and welcome. It's a pleasure to be presenting you a concert of Christmas music at this time, and it's a very great pleasure to be here. And we hope you are comfortable in your rooms and at home and can feel the joy of this music uh, with us. We're going to start with the Nutcracker Overture. And it's an arrangement that I've made for this ensemble. What we have here on stage are five woodwind players, a woodwind quintet, and a keyboard doing various jobs uh, on forte piano, uh, harpsichord, and uh, celeste later. So enjoy this music, the overture to the Nutcracker, as you might know, 1892 when it premiered, 1954 in my lifetime when it became a popular item in the world through the ballet setting by Georges Balanchine and the New York City uh, Ballet. That uh, means that all of these uh, ballet companies have depended on it uh, during the latter part of the 20th century and into this 21st century. Here's the overture to that great work. was fun. You almost feel like dancing to it. Very danceable music, actually. Carries forth the magic of that great ballet. We're going to 
Oh, I'm uh, James Sinclair. Wouldn't you want to know? <laughs> the conductor of Orchestra New England who brings you this concert. And I know we have many friends out there who have been to our concerts and uh, hope that you will continue to join us when time does allow us all to be in a concert together. But here we are, able to play live music for you. It's a great pleasure. We're going to do 12 remarkable arrangements of Christmas carols for you, done by a friend of the orchestra, Noel Scott Stevens of Tampa Bay, Florida. And he's taken a dozen Christmas carols that are well known to you and uh, given them an amazing color in this ensemble that includes the woodwinds, flute, oboe, sometimes English horn, French horn, bassoon, and clarinet and the keyboard, a unique combination of instruments that I think is rather magical. This first carol is Good King Wenceslas. It's an 1853 Christmas carol that tells the story of the 10th century Bohemian king bravely harshing, uh, <laughs> braving a harsh winter uh, weather to give alms to a poor peasant on the Feast of St. Stephen's, which is the second day of Christmas. The music itself, the tune, is set to a melody from the 13th century, which was a carol for springtime called Tempus Adest Floridum, which is the time is near for flowering. But here it is, as you know it, good King Wenceslas. arrangements. And we move to our second of these very special arrangements, the lovely O Little Town of Bethlehem. The text was written by an Episcopal priest in Philadelphia. He was inspired by visiting to Bethlehem itself in 1865. Our arranger starts and ends by having the horn player do the uh, honors. Our horn player is Bob Hoyle.
Beautiful arrangement, beautifully played. Thank you, Bob. God rest ye, Mary, gentlemen, is an English uh, traditional Christmas carol, and it's one of the oldest extant carols, dated to the 16th century or earlier. Mary really means peaceful in this Middle English, and there's a comma, God rest you peacefully, gentles. Our arrangement gives our harpsichordist, Gary Chapman, a solo eight bars. Enjoy. That is cute. Deck the Hall is a very traditional carol. carol. The mel uh, melody to that is Welsh, dating back to the 16th century. And it belongs to a winter carol then for New Year's Eve. The English lyrics were written by a Scotsman in 1862. Deck the Hall. Thank 
Hope you're enjoying these arrangements. They're by Noel Scott Stevens, and this is Orchestra New England presenting these carols, and the ensemble of woodwinds are Harmony Five, a standing group that plays together, and we're very happy to have Gary Chapman join us so that uh, we can do these remarkable arrangements. Hope you're enjoying it. The lyrics for What Child Is This were written by William Chatterton Dix in 1865. At the time of composing the carol, carol meaning the lyrics, Dix had been struck by a severe illness. While recovering, he underwent a spiritual renewal. That led him to write several hymns, including lyrics to this carol, that was subsequently set to the tune of Green Sleeves. And that tune is a uh, traditional English folk song from the early Elizabethan era. I'm sure you'll recognize it, and you also know this as a fantastic uh, Christmas carol. Noel's arrangement features Janet Rosen on the English horn. Now that is an elegant tune in any setting, but that was a very beautiful setting. Thank you, Janet. Joy to the world. It's the most popular hymn in North America. The composer is Lowell Mason, the same gent who wrote Never My God to Thee. He penned the immortal Joy to the World in 1836. Interestingly, he attributed the tune as from Handel, 
that is George Friedrich Handel, the composer. Musically, the first four notes of Joy to the World are the same as the first four notes of the chorus, Lift Up Your Heads, from Handel's Messiah, Lift Up Your Heads. But after that, there's no real parallel in the Handel's work. But this arrangement does it uh, a nice fun turn. Here's Joy to the World. festive sort of uh, fanfare ar around the joy of joy to the world. Uh, I want to introduce the players, although I'm mentioning them as I go. Over here on keyboards is Gary Chapman, who's come all the way from Norwich for this. Jennifer Berman on flute. Where from? Are you Hartford? West Hartford. West Hartford. West Hartford. And Janet Rosen, is it Milford? Mm -hmm. Right, Milford. And Bob Hoyle who's uh, down from West Hartford as well, is that right? Yeah. yeah. And Brooke Ellen? And, uh, where do you live? Oh, in Norwich. Oh, we have two people from Norwich. This is awesome. <laughs> and Jim Forge. But I lived in Cheshire for 20, over 25 years. Cheshire for 25 years. This is hometown for you. It is. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Next, the first Noel. And we have as well. No, we did that. Yep, slipped it past you while you were talking to other people. That's what happens. Yeah, Bob. Well, welcome to the show. Next is the first Noel, spelled one or another way, N-O-W-E-L-L or N-O-E-L. It's of Cornish origin. That's uh, Cornwall, England, of course, uh, but was first published only in 1823. Uh, in early modern English, Noel, N-O-W-E-L-L, -L, is a synonym for Christmas, and it's from the French Noel, which stands for the whole of the Christmas season. This setting starts with a familiar tune in a canon, started by our clarinetist, Jim Forge, and followed one beat later by our flutist, Jennifer Berman. And our bassoonist, Brooke Allen, gets uh, a, a solo in this as well. So the main tune turns to the bottom instrument. Here's the first Noel.
cannon at the beginning and reversed uh, cannon at the end. Shapely, lovely. And now hark, the herald angels sing. It first appeared in 1739, and over a century later, it became popular in a version by Charles Wesley and George Whitefield, the two founding ministers of Methodism. Methodism, hello. <laughs> The music is adapted from Vaterland in Deinem Gauen, an aria that appears in the cantata by uh, the estimable Felix Mendelssohn. Hark, the herald angels sing. I get some treatment. These arrangements are not what you would make up in the shower. They're fairly, they're fairly imaginative, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Next, uh, I, thought, I saw three ships come sailing in. It's a traditional Christmas carol and folk song from England, from the 17th century, possibly Derbyshire, and was published in 1833. The lyrics mention the ships sailing into Bethlehem. Think on that for a moment. The nearest body of the water is the Dead Sea, at least 20 miles away. Good luck docking in Bethlehem. It's probable that the ships were actually the camels used by the Magi. Camels were frequently referred to as the ships of the desert. You'll enjoy that our ranger creates a bunch of rolling waves to give an image of actual ships coming into Bethlehem. Thank you. 
Next, we'll be playing a tune called Jesus's Lullaby, a very beautiful, laid-back, quiet meditation. And I can't really tell you where it's from, but I think the arrangement's awesome. Here's Jesus's Lullaby. is sweet. Whatever its provenance is, it ought to be known by everybody and sung. It's so beautiful and perfect lullaby. Although I stayed awake, really, the whole time. <laughs> and before we do a sort of grand finale, Silent Night, Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht. It's a hugely popular Christmas carol composed in 1818 by Franz Xaver Gruber to lyrics by Josef Mohr in a small town near Salzburg, Austria, where Mozart was from. The organ had stopped working in the church, so Gruber played the accompaniment on guitar. You all remember the version sung by Bing Crosby in 1935. That's the fourth best-selling single of all time. Here's Silent Night.
It's hard to follow something as beautiful as that. But we've saved the 12 days of Christmas to be our final big number. It's an English Christmas carol that enumerates the increasingly numerous gifts given on each of the 12 days of Christmas that starts with Christmas Day. The lyrics were published in England in 1780 without music as a chant or a rhyme, and it's thought to be of French origin. The way we know it comes from a 1909 arrangement that introduced the familiar prolongation of the verse, five golden rings. You get one partridge, you get a pair of, do of turtle doves, a trio of French hens, a quartet of calling birds, your five gold rings, geese, a laying, swans, a swimming, maids, a milking, ladies dancing, lords, a leaping, pipers piping, and, God forbid, a dozen drummers <laughs> drumming. <laughs> Thanks for being part of our audience and for allowing us to entertain you. Happy holidays to everyone, and have a very great season. I'm going to conduct, I forgot. <laughs>
too. Very nice job by everybody. Oh, we do have something more we can do for you. I can hear you applauding. <laughs> so, one more number. It's a seasonal favorite and features a new sound on our instrument over here. Here's my own arrangement of Tchaikovsky's Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy from the immortal Nutcracker Ballet with Gary Chapman at the Celeste. Jim Sinclair, the conductor of Orchestra New England. We'd love to have you join us for concerts. You'll also hear Harmony 5 on their own concerts, and you'll definitely hear Gary Chapman, one of the most popular and sought after keyboard players in all of Southern New England. And we're very happy to all be together making live music for, I'm losing my hat here, making live music for you. Thank you very much for having us join you. Good evening. <laughs>